Hello the Matrix, welcome to Educate. <laughs> Let us do drainage patterns. So what is a drainage pattern? The drainage pattern is just the arrangement of streams in a drainage basin. I remember basically a drainage basin is the area where a river flows or a river system flows. So we want to see how are the streams of that river system arranged. So they may look different actually. <clears throat> So now let us look at the first type of drainage pattern that we've, we've got a, a dendritic drainage pattern. So in a dendritic drainage pattern, the tributaries join at acute angles. That is, remember acute angles, you did them in primary. Those are just angles below 90 degrees. So when the two tributaries meet, for example, this is a tributary and then this is another tributary, the space between them, which is the angle between them, it is actually less than 90 degrees. So when two streams or when two tributaries meet, they meet at an angle that is acute, an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So this is how the, the dendritic drainage pattern would look like. The other thing about the dendritic drainage pattern is that it looks like the branches of a tree or it resembles the branches of a tree. So it just simply means that it looks like branches of a tree. So you can even see that um, on this practical diagram, we have got this dendritic pattern of streams in a river pair, in a river system, and it definitely looks like these are branches of a tree because you know that um, the branches of a tree they join together in this pattern. So you can see that um, this is the same thing as dendritic pattern. Now, <clears throat> what is the reason for having this kind of dendritic pattern? When do we actually have a dendritic pattern? The reason is that the river where we have a dendritic pattern it is flowing over the area that is rocks with equal resistance to erosion. So basically here, the underlying area, the underlying area, the underlying area has got rocks that have got equal resistance to erosion. When you talk about the underlying area, we're basically talking about the area where the river is flowing. So in this case, the area where the river is flowing has got rocks and those rocks have got equal resistance to erosion. Taking a look at this practical image, you can see that here we have got a, a river system. We've got these are two tributaries and they are meeting here at this confluence to make a, a river. And this is a river system as well all in all it's a river system so now in this river system you can see that it is flowing on top of an area that has got rocks and those rocks have got equal resistance to erosion it means that um the way the rocks are resistant to erosion that is how how hard is it to 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 wash away the rock it is equal on all the types of rock all the rock have got equal resistance erosion all of the rocks here over the underlying area where a where this river flows have got equal resistance to erosion so they can say the underlying area they are referring to the area where this river is flowing so this is the dendritic pattern so we also have got a trellis pattern so in a trellis pattern uh, you have got a tributaries joining at the mainstream at a right angle so this is just the description of the pattern this was just the description of the pattern you are describing how the pattern looks like to your eye okay so for a trellis pattern we have got tributaries that are joining the mainstream at right angles if we look at this this is the mainstream this which i'm highlighting with a purple okay maroon this is the mainstream suppose the mainstream is going in that direction so this is my main stream. So now for a trellis pattern, the tributaries or the smaller streams, which are our tributaries, they actually join the main stream at 90 degrees angles or at right angles. You can see that here, we're having streams flowing towards the main stream. They're flowing towards the main stream and they're definitely joining the main stream at angles of 90 degrees, angles of 90 degrees so our streams here they are flowing towards the stream and they are joining at angles of 90 degrees the other thing that we have in the trellis pattern the other feature of the description is that the main streams are parallel to one another so the main streams are parallel to one another if we are going to have another main stream here 
is going to move in this direction. This is another mainstream here. We can also have another mainstream here as well. So the mainstreams are parallel to one another. Remember when two things are parallel, they're actually going the same direction or they're actually in the same orientation, but they're never meeting. So these are the mainstreams and they're parallel to one another. I'm sure you do something like that in maths or maths lit or something like that. Yeah, so this is just a description of the trellis pattern. Now we have to account for the reason. You have to give the reason why the trellis pattern looks the way it looks like. So looking at a practical image of the trellis pattern, the area has got rocks of alternating resistance. That is the first reason. We give a mark for each reason. Don't mix them. Do not put end. Don't put end. Don't do that. Write the points independently of one another. So the area has rocks of alternating resistance. So it means that um, the rocks here over which this river is flowing, you can see the pattern here that we've got a mainstream here and then we've got tributaries joining the mainstream at 90 degrees. That is pretty much clear. And then now you will find out that uh, the rock layer here, the underlying rocks here, they've got alternating resistance. It means that some of them are less resistant rocks, some of them are more resistant rocks. Remember, when the rock is more resistant, it means it is not easily eroded away by the water or it's not easily weathered away. So here we have got rocks that have got alternating resistance, rocks that have got different resistances to erosion. So the area has got rocks with a alternating resistance. And the other a reason for the formation of a trellis pattern is if the area has got folded sedimentary rock. Remember, you did faulting and folding in grade 10, whereby the landforms looked like something like this. Okay, think it was something like this. These are layers of sedimentary rock that have been folded. Or remember that the sedimentary rock is easy, so it has been folded, literally folded. So now, if it happens that we're going to have rainfall in this area, the drainage pattern that's going to form when it starts uh, flowing away here is going to be known as a trellis pattern. So there are two reasons or there are two explanations um, for, for the development of a trellis pattern. It's either we talk about alternating resistance or we talk about folded sedimentary rocks. These are all the reasons for the development of this type of drainage pattern. So that's basically it with the trellis pattern. Now let's look at the rectangular pattern. In the rectangular pattern, we've got mainstreams that have got right angle bends. So the mainstream is actually bending at right angles. Look at this. This is an example of a rectangular pattern. This, the tributaries as well, they are also bending at right angles, not only the mainstream and also the tributaries. Let me just include it. So the mainstream and the tributaries have got a whatever spelling, tributary, a tributaries, yes. The mainstream and the tributaries are having right angle bends. So it means this is actually bending as it moves. You can see that this is your stream here moving, it bends. It's moving and it bends. Okay, these are the tributaries, they're also bending as well. Then the stream is moving and it has got bends. Even the tributaries as well, as they move, they keep bending. 90 degrees bends. So you say it has right angle bends or you can say it has got 90 degrees bends. Still acceptable for the rectangular pattern. Make sure that you differentiate this from a trellis pattern because remember that in a trellis pattern, the tributaries are straight up and they are joining the mainstreams at 90 degrees. They are joining the mainstreams at right angles. But as for this rectangular pattern, the mainstream itself has got a rectangular bends or you can say right angle bends. So the reason for that rectangular pattern is that uh, the area has got igneous rocks that have got joints and cracks. So remember that uh, igneous rocks are the strongest of all rocks, basically. So if we have got uh, the underlying area or the underlying rock structure, if they say explain the underlying rock structure for the rectangular pattern, you have to say that uh, the area has got igneous rocks 
and those igneous rocks have got joints and cracks so there are cracks in the rocks so i couldn't find a realistic image for the rectangular pattern on a real river so this is just a schematic sketch that uh, you might find in your exam look at this there's a parallel pattern so the parallel pattern has got swift and straight streams so the streams are swift and they are straight you can see that these these are your streams you can see that they are straight they are actually very straight they are not actually bending like the ones of the you know of the dendritic remember for the dendritic the streams are bending like this making it look like a tree but for the parallel pattern the streams are quite straight you can see that the streams are quite straight and they are swift and then the other thing for the parallel pattern we have got fewer tributaries so this is one point i was supposed to put a full stop there so here for a parallel pattern we have got swift and straight streams and we also have got fewer tributaries so the tributaries are fewer we can even check this out and compare to a dendritic pattern if we look at the dendritic pattern the one that we did here it has got many tributaries this is a tributary this is a tributary this is a tributary many of them but as for a parallel pattern we have got fewer tributaries this is a tributary one two three four five six there are only six tributaries here so the area has got fewer tributaries so now the parallel pattern occurs if the underlying area is a steep slope so basically remember a steep slope is a mountainous area in a sense something like this so this mountainous area it, if it happens that it rains on top of this mountainous area due to this steep slope due to this steep slope the there will be a formation of the parallel pattern there will be a formation of the parallel drainage pattern so you need to also know how to account for the underlying rock layer or rock structure we have got a radial drainage pattern the radial drainage pattern we've got streams that are radiating from a central point such as a higher ground if you're gonna find the word radiate complicate complicating your things the streams are flowing from a central region so streams flowing from a central point such as a higher ground so basically you have got a dome shaped area there are reasons why it is a dome shaped area this is an area that looks like this a mountainous area it looks like something like this there's a mountainous area so in such a mountainous area when it rains on top of the mountain what do you expect uh, will happen if it rains on top of the mountain or on top of this dome shape or on top of the hill the water is to run off in different directions so the water will have to do it to run off in different directions going to the lower lying areas so basically the water is running off to the lower lying areas so that actually forms a, a radial drainage pattern so in a radial drainage pattern we have got a high lying ground on topographic maps they usually like to say that uh, maybe this is they write they put a contour line here and the contour line has got 50 meters or maybe they put a spot height or a trigonometric station all of those things that represent height they say maybe the height here is 50 meters and then maybe they say here the height is 10 meters you need to be able to identify that on a topographic map i'm not teaching map work particularly here but i'm just giving you a hint that this can come up so here the streams will move from an area that is high such as 50 meters to an area that is low such as 10 meters so you can see that your streams here all of them are going away all of the streams are going away from the high line area and they're going towards the lower line areas just like in this uh, image that represents the drainage uh, the radial drainage pattern so the streams are flowing away from a central point or from a higher ground don't use the word central point it's going to complicate your life just say that the streams are flowing from a higher ground to a lower ground or to a lower line area so that's it and then uh, you look also at the centripetal pattern the centripetal pattern it is the opposite of the radial drainage pattern so when you've got a centripetal pattern it is doing the opposite effect as the radial drainage pattern did so basically in a centripetal pattern we've got streams that are converging into a lower line area so we can just say that um, as streams are moving from different high line areas they are moving towards a lower line area so 
this is something like this. You can see that here we're having streams that are moving towards one point. These are streams that are all moving towards one point, towards a central point. That's why I say it's a centripetal, a centripetal pattern. So here the streams are moving towards a central point. The streams are moving towards a central point. This is because the point is a lower lying area. Remember that water always moves from where it is a high lying area from a higher height to a lower height. So in this sense, if they were to use a topographic map to represent that, this one will be a lake. It will be a lower lying area, maybe a lake or a dam or something that is a lower lying area, at a lower lying area. Maybe they're going to give you the, the spot height here and they say that spot height here is 10 meters. That's a lower lying area. And here maybe they put a contour line here and then they say this contour line is 50. You already know that this 50 is 50 meters. So do you realize that here the water it is actually moving from the 50 meters towards the 10 meters. The streams are, are actually converging at a central point or into a lower lying area such as a lake or a dam. So in a topographic map, they like to use contour lines and spot heights to represent that type of drainage pattern. So now the reason is that the area is actually a basin shaped. The area looks like a basin. Yes, the area looks like a basin from the side view. That is, if you are going to, if the streams are actually going to, it's going to be raining here, then the streams are going to move towards the center. If it's going to rain this other side, the streams will move towards the center. So it's a basin shape. It looks like a basin. And then the last one we have is a deranged pattern. The deranged pattern has got streams that have got irregular patterns, just an irregular shape. And uh, look at this. This is just an irregular shape. So in this irregular shape, you can see that the tributaries are not linking up with the mainstream. Look at this. This, this is a tributary. And in between the tributary, you see that there is a lake. And after the lake, there's another tributary. Here's another tributary coming up. And then when they meet, there's another lake. So the tributaries are not actually linking up with the mainstream in any sense here. And this is just a deranged pattern. They usually like to use these diagrams. There are these diagrams that I'm using to make videos. These are uh, exam diagrams. They are most likely to come into your exams. So um, I'm actually giving you the memorandum here. So here, basically in a deranged pattern, uh, the, the, the pattern is irregular. It's an irregularly shaped pattern. And then the areas are not linking up. So the underlying rock structure for the deranged pattern is that uh, the areas have been subjected to glaciation. So that's the reason for us to end up having a deranged pattern. Just means that uh, the areas have been subjected to glaciation. So now it's your responsibility to go and search. What is glaciation? because I'm not going to tell you. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends to stay tuned.